Kill switch off. Hey, what's up guys? Ben and Joe from Back in the Snow. Um, I'm gonna do the video a little different during an intro today because of the footage, but first off, wanted to give a big shout out to the Prairie Riders Snowmobile Club. Uh, gave a shout out to one of our videos, so we wanted to do the same for them. So thank you guys, we really appreciate it. Yeah. Here on episode four today of Back on the Snow, we're gonna show you guys how to pull the skid out of the old Articat. Then we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna replace all the bearings. So we'll show you how to, how to pull the snap rings, replace the bearings. And then finally, the fun part, yeah, trying to get the in. skid back in. Yeah. So sometimes they go in easy and- Yeah, sometimes they require another truck. Yeah, so, so yeah, so stay tuned, watch in guys, and uh, we'll see you again, yep. Back on the Snow. And now, our feature presentation. That trip because, uh, Which is going to work great on the Yamaha, but uh, made in Minnesota. Work on, you know, Japanese stuff. I don't know about these American sizes. Alright, let's see if it does a half inch. So take the skid out, you got four bolts. No, it's bigger than a half inch. Oh. See, it was metric all along. Oh, it was a metric. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So, we're gonna be simple four bolts. You got one right there, and one there, and the same two on the other side. Now, the thing that wants to happen is when you're removing these, there's a shaft in there. If it's well oiled and greased, it's gonna just wanna spin. So, we're gonna see just how much that is. But, one trick just hit it with the impact and spin it long enough, it'll. Take her, or here you want to try Going the other side? Yeah, try the other side. Oh. Why is my uh, thing no longer showing? Oh, it'll just go out. Oh, do I need it? Because it just saves the battery. You oh, don't need to do anything. I touch it. Okay. Yeah, you can touch it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, anybody trying to do YouTube yeah. stuff out there. Alright, you want to take her out all yeah. the way? Yeah. Let's spin her out. Okay. Right, a, lot of, uh, a lot of rust in there on that one. Yeah, but yeah, if you're doing YouTube, man, starting out doing this stuff is kind of a... It's, it's really... Like, it's definitely like a science to it. Yeah. Come on. You just leave it Come on. 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 Oh. Look. Oh, look at that. That's kind of weird that the... Uh, <laughs> that kind of yeah. shot up. Usually you pull those out, they drop. Yeah, halfway there. So, uh... We're also gonna try something new and not lose any bolts on this one. Yeah. Yeah, but the worst thing we were talking about with YouTube or doing any type of these videos is you're just so used to doing stuff mm -hmm. and having to sit around and wait for camera and everything. All right, where are we at on this one? Now? Okay, so you're gonna be right there on the bogey wheel. Oh, uh, this one right here. Yep. Whoa. You see that? that? No. No. So no, we've gotten the first three bolts out in about 40 seconds. Yeah. This last one is going to not come out. Oh, uh, don't say that. Nope. I've worked on enough of these. There's no don't way. Don't say that. Came right out. Okay. Nice job. That's impressive. That never happens. Huh. Usually what happens is one of these front ones gets hung up. And I mean, you work out a lot of yeah, so okay. Now, next thing we're gonna do is uh, get the skid out. There's a lot of ways you can do this. I see some guys that like take off those back bogey wheels uh, first while the track's still in. One thing that we like to do is just put the sled on its side, um, especially when you got the pick track, because otherwise, when it starts happening, those picks tend to sting a little bit. Yeah. So. Yeah. Put this down, we're gonna flip over it on, on its side, and then we're gonna wrestle it out. If you got three people, it's a lot easier. Oh, heck yeah. I was thinking, man, if shirts was here, that would. Yeah, because you just pull this thing up to have one person hold it, the other two just wrestle it out. But yep. go ahead and we'll get this out. And there she is, she's out. Yeah. So here's the, here's the issue. This is why we pull it. First of all, I mean, some of them spin. They seem okay. Some of them. One high facts need to go. Look at this. Look how worn those high facts are at the back. It's never good. 
So the reason why you got such an uneven wear pattern here on the Hyfax is because she has some more bogey wheels right here. And those bogey wheels should go in right in here on either side of this. And that's gonna carry the weight of half of the track. And so from here to here, it's completely unsupported and there should be something here. So that's why you wore so much of that down. I give the guy credit. He's probably out snowmobiling. It broke, went to Ace Hardware. Probably finished off his weekend. <laughs> that's <laughs> I mean, crazy. I mean, is that just a piece of threaded rod through there? That's what it is. I mean, you can tell it's from Ace, it's the blue special. It's got the blue on the end. Oh, nice. It's the kind that you brought, bought as a kid to go make a, a go-kart. He's like, yep, I'll just go ahead and... Uh, so here's the, here's the other thing, it's a little concerning. This is why the, it was squeaking so bad. So obviously it's loose here because it's the wrong size. Should be a pretty pretty well fitted shaft in there, and that's missing. Okay, so that's problem number one. Problem number two is there's supposed to be like a rubber grommet on this, and that's completely totally gone. Missing. And so now you got all that playroom. Here's another problem that we're having right now. Yeah, the belly pan is pretty uh, pretty is, toast. It's kind of what happens when you uh, when you ditch pan, guys. So we're gonna, today this was the big thing. I wanna take this home and get started on this. Uh, they, they recommend every year you're supposed to go through and do this. Depending on how many miles you put on. A lot of people just take it to the dealer and have, it, have them do it. You do have to pull the skid to get to some of the bogey wheels. It's just gonna be too tough to do it with the skid still in there. So what we did is we pulled off one of the bogey wheels here and I'll show you how to change out the bearings. So a couple things you're gonna need. You're gonna definitely need a screwdriver. Get the dust caps off, and then you're going to need a good pair of snap ring pliers. Um, don't buy the cheap ones. Don't buy the cheap ones, please. You buy the $5 ones, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not going to be happy. So uh, with these uh, dust covers, you just got to be super careful because they do get brittle over the years, and the goal is not to break stuff. Now, anything you break, you can buy off eBay, but I mean, new dust covers, it's like 10 bucks. And, yeah, just the money you don't have to spend. Yeah, so you just give it a little tap, get in there in a little groove. Oh, just like it planned, came off. There's one. Flip it over. Yeah, let's see if we can get up in there. Kind of see the plastic groove that you're hitting on. Let's give it a couple taps. There we go now. You got the exposed bearing. This one's actually not too bad. I can feel it grabbing quite a bit though, so. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to change this one out while we got the skid out. Um, looked up the parts. Uh, Articap smart. They just went one size with all mm. the bearings. Uh, you know, you get Yamaha, they'll go two or three different sizes. Polaris, same thing, two different sizes. So I think that's a lot of Articap just being like, oh, well, we're not going to spend RD <laughs> on all these extra bearing sizes. Why don't we just make it one? Yeah, hey, I appreciate it. <laughs> There's nothing worse than having a skid out there. You have all the bearings not having it. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, we go ahead, get your, you got your ring in here, get your snap ring pliers on it, and this thing is gonna be seized like none other because this is 97 Panther. You're ready for it to fly off in your eyes. Yeah, so, you gotta break it free first. Actually, broke free pretty easy. What I like to do is if you get it off, put the screwdriver in there. There we go. And. Edit that little scream out of the video. I will. I <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely will. <laughs> okay, I got this side free now too. Okay, pops out. Maybe so. like a disclaimer. Just say we're eye protection. Yeah. You know. Well, I got it right here. We do. I so. mean, and I've got them on my head, so you know. <laughs> These things do yeah. pop out with quite a bit of force. Yeah. So. I would actually when you put the hand over it, either or. So now you got this bearing. Uh, easiest way, you go over to the little ratchet set. What do we want? Oh. That looks like a winner there. All We're right. gonna go with the 1316s. Okay. Oh, just big enough. You mean you found a standard size? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. The nice thing is you don't even have to be careful because you're replacing this bearing. Just pound it out. And 
I don't know. I think she has some <laughs> life left let's on just, her. Let's just lube it up and put it back in. Yeah, I think so. So, the reason why you do it, you go from that bearing to this bearing. So, obviously, you've improved quite a bit. So, now you gotta go ahead, you gotta clean out the wheel. You're gonna have a groove in here where the snap ring went in. Just take a flathead screwdriver, give that a good scrape. Get all the gunk out of there so yeah. it sets in there correctly. Scrape it up a little bit, get all that stuff. Since this isn't my garage, I'll just knock it on Ben's floor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. And then I like to take this PB blaster. A couple of things it does, it really cleans out the rust that's in there. I don't know if you noticed that old uh, wheel's a little rusty. Just kind of let it turn in there. And the nice thing it does too, besides just getting the rust out, is that uh, next time, when you go put that wheel back in here in just a minute, you're gonna hold that so it'll yeah. dump it all over. It's all lubricated so that bearing will slide right in. Usually. Yeah. I said that, now it's not gonna fit. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and take your bearing. You gotta be careful if you do have to hit on it a little bit. Don't wanna hit the rubber. Push. Just a little bitty tap. I got a bigger one in there if you want. Okay, now putting the snap ring back in. If it's real bad, so this one's actually pretty good shape. If it's real bad, what I have is I have the kid uh, go ahead and take some sandpaper and clean it, but Which I've got some in there. this yeah. one's pretty good shape. So we're just gonna go ahead, hand over the top. You'll feel it go back into the channel. What I like to do is just put your screwdriver on the back end. Make yeah, sure. make sure it's in place, guys. It can look like it's in there, but. That one's set real well. So, back in. Time to go ahead and put your dust covers back on. And bam, just like that, you're good to go. Bob's your uncle. Got a spinning wheel. Perfect. So, go ahead and repeat that step uh, about 11 more times. Yep, and... uh, there's a lot of wheels. But do it now so you're not uh, doing this in December or January. So that's that. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the high packs. Now I already pulled the bottom bolt off of this. And the reason why you replace your high packs, what are they like 20 some odd bucks? Yeah. They save your track. Um, once again they recommend every season, every other season, replacing your high packs. I mean otherwise you're rubbing your track up against the actual like rails. Yeah. So it's gonna now, if you remember when we first uh, got this sled, we were missing this axle here. So you're missing two bogey wheels. Um, they did a kind of a bush fix to keep their weekend going. And I appreciate that. <laughs> so they, uh, they did run two bogey wheels less, which meant that there was a lot more tension on the, on the high packs from the track. And so it really, really wore it out. So uh, let's go ahead and pull this one off. Now I watched a video of a guy who did this without even taking the skid out, but I wouldn't recommend that. So as you can see, it got really, really worn at the back. So let me compare it to the new ones we got here. These are long enough. How many free spiders are with that? I might not even have to cut this. That's pretty close. Let's see, you really compare I mean, you're like double the width uh, and this is what protects your track and keeps everything happy on your sled. So, I might not even need to cut these. Yeah, let's slide it on and see. Okay. No time like to cut it. Go get the red hammer and give him a little knock from the back here. There. There you go. Give him a little tap a tap. There we 
go. Now she's sliding. Hey, you want me to stick my foot up in front of here? Yeah. Yeah, stop it from moving. Keep coming. And you're almost at the front. Okay. And you just gotta make sure the holes lined up, and these actually don't need to be cut at all. Awesome. That's never saves, happened. Yeah, saves some time. <laughs> yeah, so. Anyways, uh, next step after we get the other one on, we'll tighten all the bolts. Um, it's best go over, make sure you got all the bolts tightened back in. Just because as you do some stuff, sometimes they're all come back to that. So we're gonna get the other high facts on, then we're gonna make sure all the bolts are tightened. And then the next step, and the last thing for today, we're gonna get that back on so this thing stops looking like it does. <laughs> and looking a little bit better. I feel bad. Ben's been staring at this. Uh, I keep telling him, at the end of the end of this, I'm gonna sell this slip for eight hundred dollars. You know, I've got a lot of junk vehicles, and that was the worst of the looking thing in my garage. Man. Every time that I tell Ben that he just looks at me like I'm crazy. I think it's eight hundred dollars left. Right? Okay. Nineteen hundred miles. Let's drop a zero. Stop <laughs> making zero dollars. Not eighty dollars left. Okay? You gotta you gotta just have some imagination here. I'm imagine. So we got the got the new hood ready to go on, so it'll be fine. She'll uh she'll do. She'll do.